May I have your attention, please? Worship will be starting in one minute. Please take this opportunity to prepare your hearts for worship and to be seated. And don't forget to put your cell phones on silent. Whichever distance and how far you are, we want to welcome you into this time that we have together. And we know that the church is not a building, it's people. It's people. And where the people of God are, that's where the church is. Amen? So we just want to just enter in and press in. Right where you're at, just press in. Just leave it. every other distraction aside. And we're going to worship the Lord with everything within us. Amen? Amen.
sing a little louder. 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 In the presence of my enemy. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Oh, sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. before you, O oh God. And Father, we lift up our hallelujah to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Almighty God, in our lives. Have your way, O oh Lord. Father, through every family in this church, Father, through the people of God, have your way, O oh Lord, through VCC. Have your way in our communities, O oh Lord, and in this nation and the nations of the world in Jesus' name. Lord. 
He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. 
are for us. You are for us. You are for us. You are for us. Because you are faithful. You're so faithful. Because you're faithful. Faithful God. And you are faithful. Because you're so faithful. You're so faithful. Faithful God, cause you're faithful, and you're so faithful. Oh God, you're faithful, you're faithful, God. He is for us, He is for us. Come on, sing it. He is for us, He is for us. situation and over every circumstance in Jesus name in Jesus name Lord we know we may be limited in these days with being able to gather together physically but your anointing carries through your anointing oh God it comes through and it carries through Father to every lounge room Father every TV oh Lord that this is being broadcasted through in Jesus name and Lord you're with every family every individual oh God Lord, your word says if we call upon the name of the Lord, if we call upon your name, O oh Lord, we shall be saved. We speak hope. Let hope rise. And darkness tremble in your holy light. Every eye will see Jesus' son.
as the people of God. Father, we lean in to all that you are, seeking your face, humbling ourselves before you. On our knees, Lord, praying, oh God, and crying out, oh Lord. Lord, that your presence would come and fill this place. Come and fill our homes. Come and fill our neighborhoods and our cities, oh God, with your presence. We give you all our praise, oh Lord, everything within us. With everything, with everything, we will shout forth your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout. Church to go forth 
And like I told Joshua, not to fear. Do not fear. Do not fear for you are about to conquer land, says the Lord. Oh, and I tell you this day like I was with Joshua, that every place your foot threads, I will be with you, says the Lord, and you will possess that land. Oh, for the enemy has surely come to infiltrate fear into the people. But my presence has come, says the Lord, to come and give peace and restore what the enemy has done. Oh, behold, I am breaking the banks of the river, says the Lord. Oh, and I will overflow in this city. I will overflow in this nation, says the Lord. Oh, for what the devil meant for bad, I will turn it for good, says the Lord. Oh, and even in the places where there has been darkness, oh, the light will shine. My light will shine. And so I tell you this day, church, rise up, rise up. Do not be afraid. Do not be scared, but shine your light, says the Lord, for I am with you. I am with you, says the Lord. where the presence of God is being poured out and manifested. Um, I'm going to now uh, do the communion, and I want to just read this scripture to be very brief. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, I have handed down to you what came to me by direct revelation from the Lord himself. The same night in which he was handed over, he took bread and he gave thanks. Then he distributed it to the disciples and said, Take it and eat your fill. It is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He did the same with a cup of wine after supper and said, This cup seals the new covenant with my blood. Drink it, and whenever you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are retelling the story, proclaiming our Lord's death, until he comes. And what I want to emphasize here this morning is that when we take the bread and we take the cup, the juice, let's not just take it and say, we're doing it, Lord, in obedience to you, and I don't really understand what's happening, but let's remember the promises that Jesus gave us. This is what it's telling. You remember the things that I have told you. And we are retelling it this morning, whether it be this morning that you need provision or whether you need healing or whether you need your, your mind to just be set at, at ease and at peace. He is able this morning when we come around the communion table there in your homes, let's remember the promises that God left us. Amen. So let us take now our bread and I will just 
extended. We're going to keep here our distance. Just take it. Pastor Johnny. Rebecca, you want to take it? Okay. Let's take the bread here. I better take a piece myself. We've never done communion exactly like this. This is definitely different. Can somebody hand, here you come get yours. Okay, if you can hand that over please. Thank you Lord, thank you Lord. Let's remember this cup seals the new covenant with my blood. And this bread that was broken for us it is his body. It's not a pretend. It's not, it is his body. That's what it's. And we are remembering this morning the covenant. We are resealing the covenant that we have made with God when we came to the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's take the bread and let's remember all the benefits that he did for us, that he left us. All the promises, the covenant, everything that we have in him. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the word that you have given us. Thank you that you have given us the word. You've given us the spirit. And, Lord, you have given us every promise that we have. And we can walk through anything because we know that you will never leave us. Lord, the, the word is full of promises that you will be with us through the valley, through the mountain, through the good times and the bad times. You are with us. And we thank you for the peace that passes all understanding when the world tells us that we need to be worried we can settle it that you are the prince of peace and you are in us and we thank you this morning we take this bread in remembrance of the work that you did on the cross take the bread okay I didn't take the juice <laughs> where's my Okay, somebody give me the juice. It's okay. We're going to get used to this. Now let's take the cup. And let's remember that the cup, which is the blood of Jesus, seals the covenant. Lord, we thank you for the blood that you poured upon Calvary for us. As we are reminded this morning, Lord, the covenant has been sealed because it was paid with blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's take the Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, you have promised us that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. And that your ear is always inclined to the cry of your people. And Lord, this morning, your people everywhere upon the face of the earth are crying out to you. And Father, we know that you hear us. But we will be at peace knowing that even if we walk through difficult situations, Lord, you are with us. You will never leave us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Pastor John. friends and all the others looking online right now. I, I speak God's love and blessings upon each of you. With so much going on in Australia and the world itself, I want to give you a word of encouragement and a great promise from the Word of God. Now, we're living in a day where relationships are very fragile. They're broken relationships broken marriages, broken families, broken bodies, and a broken society. There is so much pain in the world, and this was never God's plan at all. However, I found a, a phrase that I'd like to show you right now, this phrase from the Word of God itself. And the phrase is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Now, this phrase is found in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews. And as I was actually looking through this, I found similar examples of this. And the very first time that it was given was found in Genesis chapter 28 and actually verse 15 as God was speaking to Jacob. And the Bible says, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Isn't this wonderful? The Lord told Jacob here, I'm not going to leave you until everything that I've said about you, it will be done. Now we also find this very same expression when Moses is addressing to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse number 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Now, Moses speaking to the children of Israel. But then Moses actually spoke to Joshua also. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse number 8, the Bible says, And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. So right there in your home right now or wherever you're watching, tell your neighbor, do not fear. That's very good. Now we also find this expression, God spoke directly to Joshua. And Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 5, the Bible says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Isn't it wonderful that we have the promise of God, that God is with us, he's never going to leave us, he's never going to forsake us. Now in the New Testament, we find this expression in Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse number 5. The Bible says, let your conduct be without covetousness, but be content with such things that you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, many years ago, I found this expression, and in the Greek language, it says this, I will never, never, never leave you. Hey, the Lord wants you to know it's never. Amen? I will never, 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 never forsake you. Now, if the Lord is with us, then all our needs are met in Him. Therefore, we need not covet anything out of, outside of Him. He will never leave us nor forsake us. This is His word of promise, and He will see our needs physical and spiritual. Remember, God demonstrated his care for Israel in the wilderness. They ate manna, they drank the water from the rock, and their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet swell. They were his responsibility and his care. How much more are we his care in Christ? All others may leave and forsake us, but the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. We find in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, and the Bible says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them 
to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. Everyone say always. Even to the end of the age. Amen. Now, to the end of the age talks about that until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back again. Now, I, I found another verse that I want to share with you. Sometimes we all go through difficult situations, and sometimes we feel like we're alone. We find in 2 Timothy chapter number 4 that the apostle Paul, he had gone before the courts, and he found that everybody had left him. It's much like Jesus Christ. In this greatest time of his greatest need, all the apostles left him also. But we find over here in 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verse 16, at my defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. So Paul is even forgiving those that didn't stand with him. But look at verse 17. The Bible says, but the Lord stood with me. And not only did he stand with me, the Bible says, and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles may, might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So here Paul says, man, no, no one was around me to help me out, but the Lord was there. The Lord stood with me, and the Lord strengthened me. And I believe this very morning, wherever you are, I know the Lord is with you. I know the Lord stands with you. And the Lord will strengthen you as we go through this pandemic problem here going on right now. I looked something else over here. What I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that God loves everybody. He does. He is for you and not against you. You may say, Pastor, but I'm broken. What can I do? My, my family is broken. My marriage is broken. My health is broken. My, my finances are broken. I feel like I'm all alone. But I've come to tell you right now in Luke chapter 4, Verses 18 and 19, the only real person that can heal you from the inside out is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we find in Luke chapter 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And I believe right now, where whoever is listening to me, Hey, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the day that God loves you. This is the day that God wants to touch you. The Lord wants to strengthen you. This is the day that he wants to manifest his presence in your life. But Pastor John, once again, there's things that have happened. John chapter 6 and verse 37 says this. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. In other words here, if you come broken, if you come to the Lord, the Lord's not going to say, no, because you're broken, I'm going to throw you away. No, no, the Lord says, if you come to him, he will not cast you away. In fact, he has come 
to heal the brokenhearted. He has come to heal marriages. He's come to heal relationships. He has come to heal every aspect of mankind itself. We find in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, so how can I do this? It's very simple. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The only thing the Lord wants us to do is this, to realize, number one, that we need him in our lives. Number two, that we confess our sins. Lord, I failed. I was born in sin, Lord, and I, I recognize I need you in my life. And the Bible says here that if I confess my sins, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But pastor, you don't realize how much I've sinned. You don't realize all the things that I've done, all the people that I've hurt, and all the people who've hurt me. You don't, you don't realize how, how wounded I am. What I've come to tell you is that Jesus Christ is the one that can come and heal your heart. And what I've come to tell you is that he loves you so much. You were born for relationship. Now what about Adam and Eve? God never turned his back on Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve turned their backs on God. And all God was waiting for was to Adam to recognize his sin, but instead of recognizing his sin, he ran from God and hid from God. The Bible clearly tells us right here, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I've got one last verse. And this is the verse. The Lord is my helper. Psalm 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The pastor right now, but what about all this coronavirus and all this stuff? Hey, I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ a long time ago. Yes, I need to use wisdom. Yes, I need to have physical isolation, all this kind of stuff. The social distancing, that is true. But the truth is this, the Lord, I trust him. He is the strength of my life. And I will not be afraid. The Bible says 365 times in the Bible, no fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And I'm telling you in the home right now, don't be afraid. The Lord is for you. He is with you. He will strengthen you just like he did the Apostle Paul. When everybody else has run away, you find God. You find the Lord Jesus Christ right there. He says, I will never leave you. And I'd like to pray right now, then we'll close off over here and just with a song in just a moment. If you're listening to me right now and somehow you're afraid, I want you to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let him be the strength of your life. Let him be the hope of your life. Let him be the foundation of your life. And so, Father, I come to you right now 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I realize you are for me, not against me. I realize, Lord, that you love me. You don't hate me. You don't hate the world. You demonstrated your love toward the world because you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, to die upon the cross to take all of mankind's sins and failures and they were placed upon your Son, Jesus. Now, Lord, this day, I come against that spirit of fear. I come against that spirit of failure. I come against that spirit, right, Lord, that said life is hopeless and I don't have any help at all. And I proclaim this day, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my life. The Lord is the one that will help me. And he's the only one that says, I'm never leaving you nor forsaking you. And Lord, I ask you to forgive me right now of all of my sins and all of my failures. I want you in my life. And I receive you into my life and into my heart. Lead me, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Once again, you're not alone. Just as God would not leave any of the patriarchs, just as God would not leave the Apostle Paul, he will not leave you. He says, I'm never leaving you or forsaking you. God bless you all. Michael, let's close out with a song.
church. Have a great week. Stay safe and uh, we'll tune in next week. God bless you.